Hello, um, I am currently living in Vietnam uh, as an English teacher and I thought it would be a good idea to make a video of um, how to come to Vietnam and get an English teaching job um, and all the rest of that stuff. So I wanted to talk about four different things um, which were how in terms of like how to get the job um, and then like the different kinds of jobs that you can get. Uh, salary and then like living just a little bit because living is a big topic but um, yeah so let's assume that you know about the whole teaching English abroad thing and you've done your certification and now you're looking to come to Vietnam TEFL.com it's a really good website it's very very easy to use it's free to use you kind of log in you make your profile um, upload all your information and then you just search and you can go by continents or countries. It's very, very easy to use. It's a really good uh, website, very, very simple. Um, that's what I use and that's how I got, you know, all my job requests and stuff like that. Another one is Dave's ESL Cafe. Um, personally, it's a little bit messy for my liking. Um, random different fonts and colors and sizes and it's just really awful on the eyes, so. I don't personally like it. However, people have used it, they have recommended it, they've said it's great for them, so by all means go and use it. I will put the links in the description so um, it's easy for you to use and you don't have to go back and listen to me say it again. So you can come by those two ways and um, Vietnam quite literally hires all year round. So. Don't worry too much about, oh, it's not the hiring season or like, oh, I'm not going to get a job, blah, blah, blah. Like, you'll get a job. Don't worry. It's fine. Like, there's tons of jobs everywhere. So, okay, let's assume you've just done your teaching certificate, your, your CELTA or your TEFL, and you're going to be a first-time teacher. There's two places that come to mind straight away, which is ILA, or as they say in Vietnam, ILA, um, and I work there or there's VUS and both of these companies are like very large and very similar in terms of what they do and how they do it. What you're going to be looking at and you really should be prepared is when you do your CELTA or TEFL, you're taught through adults, like you have these adults to practice on and teach. You have your, your, your trainer who teaches you everything and all the rest of it. What they don't teach you and what they don't explicitly say is how you are actually going to be doing like just kids, you're going to be teaching very, very small young kids and you're going to be in these very random strange conditions. In terms of Vietnam, a contract for you know a normal teaching language center is actually split up of like 65-75% government school. Uh, so it's actually split up of like, oh my god. English teacher, I can't even speak English. So it's actually split up into like 65-75% government school contracts. I said it. Um, and that's 50 students in a room, uh, different different classes throughout the day, 7 a.m. till 4 p.m. and like no AC, just fans all around the wall, blackboard, no computer, no projector, like nothing like that. And you just think like these speaking activity games with them continuously for that entire lesson. Lessons can be 35 minutes or they can be like an hour and 20 minutes. Depends. Uh, so you're going to be doing majority of that and then you've got your evening and your weekend classes at the language center which can range from you know really tiny small baby kids like you know three, four, five years old all the way up to like 15, 16, 17 year old kids. And that is pretty much the standard for first time teacher. That's what you will be doing for about a year to two years, like that's it. Towards the end of your year mark, you probably will be in the position where you know what is going on and what is good and what isn't good. So you can start requesting like different types of classes, maybe teach adults, older kids, more advanced levels and classes, stuff like that. But in terms of those two jobs, ILA and VUS, for me personally, when I was working at ILA, I worked there for a year and a half. I personally didn't have a very good experience. But, with that said, I would still recommend looking into it because it's a very, very good place to begin as a teacher, first-time teacher, because it's a big reality check. 
you don't realize that as an as an English language teacher you actually have to do two things you have to learn the the educational academic side of things and how to be a professional teacher and teach and you also have to learn the business side of things because at the end of the day we don't get like hired through a government to work in you know like a normal school environment um, these kids are coming as enrichment which means we are working for a business which means we are the promotional face of that business to make money if we do a good job the kids come back if we do a bad job the kids don't come back and it's very easy to go to another language center instantaneously and they you know they spend their money there so be wary that sometimes incentives and feedbacks will be more circulated around towards of like are you doing enough to make sure the kids are happy so there's that to consider as well with that said um, I didn't get trained at ILA until after six months my first day was kind of ridiculous in terms of uh, I had to work from 7 a.m. till 4 p.m. at government school I had no idea where I was going the address was in Vietnamese I arrived there late um, and then I taught it was my first day and then they told me at the end of the day, because you were late in the morning, you have to make up the class now, like at 4 p.m. And I was like, yeah, but I've got to go to the English language center and teach now. Like, my class will start at like 5 or 6 p.m. or something. Like, yeah, no, it's fine, you've got time. So there's me in my head thinking, okay, 4 p.m., I'm done, I'll go, I'll start preparing stuff. No, I had to do that teach until like 5 p.m. or something then went back to the language center it was like my first time there or something and then um, I met the manager I met the man I think it was on the first day or the day before I met the manager and he was like hi I'm so and so um, so I'm gonna be gone for two months doing my Delta training um, which was a lovely introduction to meeting your manager and then he was like but don't worry about it this is, you know, so and so, he's a supervisor, he'll look after you, he's not going anywhere. Keyword. Keyword. He's not going anywhere. Um, a week, half a week later, he's like, hey, I haven't got a new job, so I'm gonna go. And he, he left for his new job. Uh, so, I've just joined, the manager's not there, the supervisor's not there, so there's no managerial staff whatsoever. Uh, so they asked like two of the more like senior teachers who had been there a long time basically like step up do the managerial roles are we gonna get paid for it uh, no um, just do it because we don't have anyone else so they were doing crazy hours all managerial stuff so I didn't get trained for after six months because then I started getting complaints because I didn't actually know what I was doing so then they're like, yeah, I think we should train you now, maybe, yeah, it's like, it is on our fault. And I was like, yeah, no, it's on your fault. Like, you didn't train me, that's why I'm doing a bad job, do my training. So, um, yeah, and then they trained me after six months. I mean, with that said, um, I, still, I still enjoyed it. I, still, I met a crazy ton of people there and stuff, and so many different memories and experiences there. So I definitely recommend looking at ILA or VUS. I worked at ILA. Personally, I think it's good. It's a huge language center. They have multiple centers across Ho Chi Minh and Hanoi. Um, I, I work, yeah, I should have stressed that. I worked in Ho Chi Minh. I live and work in Ho Chi Minh. So, um, ILA, VUS, I know is just very similar. I didn't work there, but I know it's pretty much the same. So that's if you're a first time teacher. If you're not a first time teacher and you have maybe a year or two years under your belt, um, what I'm doing now is something called IELTS. I'm an IELTS test prep teacher, uh, which means I don't deal with any small children anymore, which is fantastic. Don't do any public school classes. I just teach kids who are getting ready to study abroad for university. So they want to learn English and their English proficiency is very, very good. Um, I teach IELTS 5.0 to advanced. So it's like just above 6.0, below 7.0. So I really enjoy it and I, and I love doing it because all my kids are like, they're from maybe the youngest is like 13, 14, up until like I have like 22 year old students. And a lot of my students who are like 19, 20, 
like I hang out with them. Like I have old students who finished and they don't study anymore, but they like kept in contact and said, you know, please tutor me English. So I go with them and I hang out and I teach them and on my other classes, they're like, oh, let's go to karaoke teacher. Like, you know, let's go out here and do that. So I'm really close with my, with my students, which is great. Um, so if you do have experience under your belt and you do want to come to Vietnam, I recommend IELTS. Uh, I work at YOLA. Um, the only thing with YOLA is they do hire in-house in terms of you have to be in the country. So you can always come to Vietnam and YOLA is consistently hiring. Another company, which is called Wall Street English, which is very famous around the whole world, they have started to do IELTS as well. Um, they mainly focus on adults though, so if you do have a good amount of experience and, and you know what you're doing, you can do adults or you can do IELTS at Wall Street English. Um, and these are like the, the big main language centers that offer the general kind of teaching. There's always opportunities for English, uh, for, of course English, there's always opportunities for international schools uh, if you have your PGCE and your, your MA and stuff like that. Um, international schools are a ton of, but they usually hire um, very, very much in advance. You can't just rock up and be like, hey, I need a job, and be like, yeah, come over, like, no problem. They, they do require a long period where they hire you and then they prepare for you to come over. So I, don't, I can't remember what the hiring period is, but I, I might, it, it might be March, I'm not sure. But yeah, if you do want to do international schools and you do have all the know-how and stuff, look into it. I mean, that, that's jobs. I mean, in terms of salary, I remember I was working roughly about 80 hours a month and I was on 28 million Vietnam Dong, which roughly equivalates to about 12, 1300 US dollars. For Vietnam, it's a lot. For Vietnam, it is, is a lot. But in terms of saving and sending back home, it's not that much, it's not great. But that's what you have to remember. You're, you're in a very, Vietnam isn't a very rich country. So the money that you get, you can live like a king or queen. Like you have a ton of money. And this is the thing that kind of gets, and I, and I can talk about this in another video, is once you mention you're a teacher, everyone kind of has like money back signs like over their eyes. Like, wow, you must be so rich. Like you're an English teacher. Especially like if you do different kinds of English teaching, like international school or IELTS and stuff like that. Everyone just assumes you're loaded, like you have so much money. And the thing is, is you do have a lot of money, but we, we still as Westerners have that Western standard of spending. So we'll spend money, like we won't think like, we'll think, oh, this thing is so cheap, I'll buy 10. And that's kind of what we'll do. Whereas Vietnamese are like, oh, this thing that I'm about to buy, I had to work like two hours to buy it. Whereas we're like, that doesn't even scratch the surface of, you know, my hourly pay. So you do get paid a lot, but a lot of people assume you get paid, you know, billions and billions, but you don't. It's a lot for them, but it's not a lot for us. So consider that. I expect anywhere from around about 30 million Vietnam Dong as a first time teacher in an English language center working about 80 hours which equivalates to roughly about, you're getting paid about 400,000 Vietnam Dong per hour, um, roughly. Uh, the job that I work at, YOLA, pays about 500,000 an hour because I'm doing IELTS, so I get paid more money. Um, so it's good, and, but it, it is more demanding because you definitely have to know your stuff at this level. Like, I have to really understand what I'm teaching, and I'm teaching, you know, listening, writing, reading, speaking as separate lessons. They're not combined together. So you like spend two hours focusing on just speaking or you spend, you know, two hours or three hours sometimes. I have three hour lessons where you can split it like you do an hour and a half listening, an hour and a half speaking, stuff like that. So it is much more demanding. But yeah, that's kind of an average salary um, in, in summary. 30 million for first-time teachers for 80 hours a month. 
if you're going to work any different kind of jobs, you can get paid anywhere from 450,000 to 600,000 per hour, depending on your experience and what kind of job you work. And in terms of living, so you can live in a lot of different places, uh, depends on your preference. So there is, um, where I used to live was called Dangbin, and that is very close to the airport and to a big district called Govap. Uh, yeah, Ho Chi Minh um, is split up into districts. So I lived in Dangbin and I worked in Govap and they were like surrounding the airport. They're very, very, very Vietnamese areas. And I'll give you a little rough breakdown. Um, there is a map that I will attach and hopefully I'll put it up in this video if I know what I'm doing. Um, District 2 has tons and tons of like rich people and foreigners and you know rich Vietnamese who are like educated and stuff. District 2 is like your place to go for all things foreign. Uh, food, shopping, all that kind of stuff. Like they have it in District 2. District 7 is quite similar but it's mostly Korean people. Um, and they have a huge mall there called Vivo City. Um, and Vivo City have like your top man, um, they have the Hamley's toy shop, they have like a big cinema and they have all kinds of stuff like that. So District 2 and District 7 are your big like modernized foreigner friendly areas. Um, not very Vietnamese at all. District 1 and District 3 are kind of joint, kind of together. Um, District 1 is the center and there's a lot going on and everything's quite chaotic and crazy. Um, District 3 is just like kind of an offshoot of District 1 where it's quite Vietnamese um, and you know there is still a lot going on and some people do live there. Um, District 5 is the Chinese area um, and then you have this district called Bin Tan which is where I currently live and Bin Tan is being you know very quickly developed with lots of kind of condominium uh, gated community areas so I'm currently living in a place called Vinhome Central Park and there are like 12 13 14 high-rise buildings with like all you know swimming pools attached gyms attached everything and this is kind of you know the new way that Ho Chi Minh is moving towards mm -hmm. so it depends on how you want to live. If you want to live in a Vietnamese area, District 1, District 3, um, Dung Bin or Go Vap, those are kind of like main areas. Um, if you want to live in a foreigner area, District 7, District 2 and part of Bin Tan. Um, and that's kind of like the living and it, it really depends how long you're living in Vietnam, what your attitude is going to be towards living in Vietnam and how much money you want to spend. When I lived in Thung Binh, I was spending about seven million, which is about three hundred dollars and that included like your maid and like she cleaned for you and everything and I you know, did your laundry and stuff and it was a very very beautiful place that I lived in. And seven million was considered of, uh, a lot of money but at the same time it was still like it was a good price for what I had. So I paid seven million, lived in Dung Binh, very Vietnamese area. Currently, I'm paying just about 10 million plus bills um, in Vinh homes and it's completely westernized and it's a big apartment. Before I was paying for a room uh, with like an attached kitchen um, kind of thing and now I'm paying for like an apartment. So 10 million is decent in terms of where I am. I'm in like a little mini town kind of thing. That's what it feels like. I step out my door and I have the coffee shops, the bistros, um, everything at my, at my doorstep. So it's really convenient. In my first year, I lived um, in a Vietnamese area because I didn't know any better and I was getting used to it. In my second year, because I know that I'm going to be leaving, I thought I'd splash out and I'd live more luxurious and more relaxed. So I'm living in quite a westernized area now. Dependent on how long you're staying, like I said, and if it's your first time or, you know, whatever, it, it depends. It's completely up to you. But I will leave a map that I, it's on Google, but it's what I've used ever since I came here and I still use it. I'll, I'll attach the map and you'll see it in the video to get an idea of what is where and what would be a good idea and how far things are away from each other. I guess that's what I wanted to cover in this video. I definitely will do some more videos touching on this topic again. Uh, maybe talking about the whole process of becoming a teacher to come to these countries. 
because I don't know if everybody knows about it or people learn about it through you know these kinds of videos. But yeah, I'll do some different videos touching on different elements of, of this kind of topic um, and go into depth more. But this was kind of just a little rough um, introduction in case you wanted to come to Vietnam. So, if it interested you, cool. If it didn't, okay. Um, if you do have any questions, uh, message me. And I'll try to get you know try to get back to them and stuff. If it's dumb questions like I don't know, just dumb questions, uh, I probably won't get back to you. Uh, maybe don't send them. Uh, but yeah, so hopefully it was informative and helpful and useful and interesting. Um, and if it wasn't, then um, you just wasted a lot of time watching this video for no reason. But anyways, thank you and bye-bye.